Hi everyone, this is your math guru. Today we're going to be discussing the rules of search part 2. Please don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button below for more easy to understand math concepts. In my previous video for rule of search part 1, I discussed what suds are and gave examples. We know that uh, suds are roots of numbers that cannot be further simplified into all numbers or integers. There are irrational numbers. For example, if I have find the square root of 4, this will give us plus or minus 2. That is a perfect square, and so therefore that is not a sod. However, if I'm to find the square root of 5, that will give us, if you punch that in on your calculator, you have 2.23606 and so forth. Because this is an irrational number, this is a sod. We discussed the uh, two rules, the first two rules, which are if I have the square root of a number, let's say to the root of n times the square root of another number or a variable to the root of n, this can be merged because they have exactly the same root as a times b, putting them under the same root. We also discussed if you have the root of a number or a variable divided by the root of another number. This can also be merged under the same root. Why? Because they have exactly the same root. Now let's go to other rules. The next rule we'll be discussing today is if I have the root of x multiplied by the root of x. This will give us x. The rules can the roots cancels out. For example, if I have square root of 5 times square root of 5, because they are both square roots, the answer is going to be 5. Let's do a check. If I have the square root of 5 times square root of 5, and I apply the first rule, which says because they have the same roots, I can match them under the same square root, that's 5 times 5. This will give us square roots of 25, which is also 5. Another rule states that if I have exactly the same variable or value under the same root and I'm adding or subtracting, if I have root of c, this will give us a plus b root of c. Likewise, if I have a square root of c plus b, let me change that to minus, minus root of c, this will give me a minus b square root of c. For example, if I have a square root of, let me use proper numbers, if I have 7, 7 square root of 3 plus 2 square root of 3, because they have exactly the same root, my answer is going to be 7 plus 2, that's 9 square root of 3. And I can explain that by changing, if I represent my root of 3 by x. I have 7x plus 2x, roots of algebra, that will be 9x. Or if I have 7 pens plus 2 pens, that will give me 9 pens. This also goes for the subtraction. The last concept we'll be discussing is how to rationalize search. If I have root of a over root of b, and I'm to rationalize, I'm going to multiply by the root of b, both at the bottom and at the top. I have root of b. That will be times square root of b over square root of b. We know that square root of, in the previous rule, if we have a, times square root of a, this will give us a. So applying the same thing, at the top we have square root of a times square root of b over square root of b times square root of b. This will give us square root of ab over b. Let's look at another example. If I have square root of 3 over square root of 2, and I'm to rationalize, I'm going to multiply both the denominator and the numerator by square root of 
2, which is our denominator. And if I multiply at the top, I'm going to have square root of 3 times 2 at the bottom. Square root of 2 times square root of 2, applying the rules of thirds, that will give me 2. Therefore, the answer is going to be 3 times 2, 6 over 2. If my denominator is an expression as shown, I'm going to be multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator. After which, I'm going to apply what I called the difference of two squares rule. So for this, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator, which is P minus Q, exactly the same terms like I have here, but my sign changes. If this was minus, then this will be plus. Whatever I do at the bottom, I'm going to do at the top. For difference of two squares, we know that a squared, the rule says, minus b squared equals a plus b, if I factorize, a minus b. Applying that rule, I have p plus q and p minus q. So therefore, if I multiply this together at the bottom, I'm going to have p squared minus square root of q all squared and at the top i'm going to have a times p minus root of q and if i simplify that i'm going to have a in bracket p minus square root of q over p squared remains the same but square root of q all squared is the same as square root of q times square root of q, which will give me q. So that will be p squared minus q. Let's look at another example. If I'm to rationalize 3 over 4 minus square root of 2, multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator, I have 3 over 4 minus root 2 times, at the top, the conjugate of the denominator will be exactly the same term, 4 and root 2, but the sign changes to plus. I'm going to do the same thing at the top for plus square root of root 2. And applying the difference of 2 squared at the bottom of my denominator, I'm going to have 4 squared minus root 2 squared. And at the top, I have 3 times 4 plus root 2. If I simplify, that will give me 3 into bracket 4 plus root 2 over 4 squared, that's 16, minus 2. I can expand or simplify. The 3 outside is going to multiply all the terms inside. 3 times 4, that's 12, plus 3 times root 2, that's 3 root 2, over 16 minus 2, that's 14. Let's look at the following challenge questions. It says A, 4 root 7, minus 2 root 7, b, 2 root 5, multiplied by 3 root 2, and the last one, 1 divided by 4 plus root 2. You can pause the video and try it out yourself. For the first one, 4 root 7 minus 2 root 7, that will give you 2 root 7. For the second one, you have 2 root 5 times 3 root 2, that will give us 6 root 10. And the last one, if you rationalize, you're going to have 4 minus root 2 all over 14. Thanks for watching. Bye.